This video is sponsored by Hawthorne. So I've got a scenario to ask you about. So let's say one day you're out and about because you know the weather's nice, like people are around and there's not a literal pandemic going on right now. So I'm a little bitter Any, anyway. And you see this person sitting across the way. They seem like they have the looks, they have this charisma and you realize this might be an opportunity that you can't miss out on. So you go up to them to talk to them. Assuming you aren't in quarantine because there's a pandemic and you're trying to social distance. I'm sorry. So you go up to them and say hi and you ask them how they're doing. And then uh, they start speaking in Japanese. All right, so question, question, question. What are the chances that this, this is going to work like on a practical level? Making the broad assumption that you aren't like ordered Japanese body pillow through the mail. Uh, weeb, and you aren't mentally prepared to get carpal tunnel from typing Google Translate every 20 seconds. Which I know some of y'all are. I think it's safe to say there is a good chance this is not going to work out. Now, if you believe it or not, this is actually how relationships work. And not in the fetishizing Japanese culture part. It's kind of weird. No, no, no. I mean in the actual language part. The love language part. Haha, -ha, good transition. Everyone has a way that they love and want to be loved. And I don't know, through life, I always realize that people who have certain love languages might act like certain ways. Like, you know how horoscopes dictate personality types based on like the alignment of the stars and coordinates of where you were born? Love languages do the same thing. It was made by very, very shallow base observations of some black guy on the internet. And also, just like horoscopes, I think you're gonna find that although no science is involved, these are going to be scarily accurate. But first we gotta find out what love language you are. Although you can mix and match, there are five possibilities. So to make this a little fun, I'm gonna put you in five date scenarios. And based off which ones you like the most, we'll dictate what your love language is. And uh, the blazing will commence from there. But before we go on to these pretend hypothetical dates, I gotta say this, no love language is gonna save you from being ugly, okay? <laughs> More specifically, the thing is that taking care of your looks is a lot like figuring out your love language. Just like how you love, there are specific things that need to be applied to you that won't work for everyone else. Some people need to be told their ass looks good in those pants, just in the same way that people who have dry skin and acne might need a face wash that doesn't make them feel like the Sahara. And that is why I partner with the fine people over at Hawthorne. See, Hawthorne is the easiest way to get premium quality hair, skin, and basically any good smell good item delivered to your house, which is, very essential for these times. People aren't allowed to leave the house right now, so I'd everything please get delivered. But what makes it different is that it's tailored to you, to your skin, your hair, your daily life, because the person you're dating can't be tailored to you. Uh, at least your self-care things can. I'm pretty sure that having a girl tailored to you is very uh, non f See, let me break this down for you, okay? So I have like drier skin. Like I am that Sahara example. So they recommended me a specific type of face wash and skin lotion. And yo, I love it. I use it every day. Like genuinely, it's really good. They hit me with conditioner, deodorant, face lotion, face wash, the cologne, two kinds. Like, oh my God. Plus they have data that knows when to send you refills. And what's even better is that all this stuff is like natural. And you can get a chance at trying it too by using my link in the description, hawthorne.co forward slash Kurt Ritchie, taking their quiz about about what type of person you are and trying your first order risk-free. And use the code Kurt Ritchie to get 20% off your first order. That's a pretty thick chunk. Feel free to cancel at any time. So again, go to my link in the description, hawthorne.co forward slash Kurt Ritchie. Use the code Kurt Ritchie for 20% off your first order. Just because you can't leave the house right now, doesn't mean you can't be clean. Okay, so scenario one, person invites you to a movie theater, right? They greet you there and they give you a big hug. On your way down, they touch your shoulder as you make funny jokes and they hold your hand through the entirety of it. By the time it's over, they give you a big hug and a kiss on the cheek. Okay, all right, situation two. This time you're at a restaurant and the person is really verbal with you. They tell you how much fun they're having. And as the conversation progresses, they tell you how smart they think you are and how nice it is to hang with you. By the time the date's over, they tell you they really like you and they can't wait to see you again. Okay, situation three. This time you're going for coffee. Your date opens the door for you to the coffee shop. They even pull out your chair. Believe it or not, they've already ordered the coffee for you knowing what you wanted already. They pick up both and bring it to a table they've already picked for you. And when you accidentally spill your coffee, they clean it up for you. You go on your way, having a good time. All right, date four. This date, y'all go to a museum, just you two. You look around with this person and it just seems they want to enjoy your quality one-on-one -on -one time. In fact, afterwards, they ask you to go hang out at their spot. Not like that. You two spend time together just watching movies, just alone by yourselves, enjoying your time. And then finally, the fifth date. This person has planned a lot of things for your date. They even bring you a little small gift of something you always wanted. They buy your meals and even surprises you with candy. The date's fun and they give you a little memento of the time. So, out of the five, which date do you prefer?
So if you pick the first one, your love language is physical touch. I mean, you like that someone is very touchy, but not like that, that kind of physical touch. No, no, they express love through physical contact, like holding hands, hugs, and the occasional shoulder touch. And honestly, I think that's kind of weird. Okay, bear with me here, hold on. Okay, look, you're not all bad. I feel like people who have physical touch of their primary love language are simple, fairly straightforward, and not too difficult to please. Like, if a handshake is emotionally sustainable for you, then I'm like shocked. Like if this whole thing was like food, it's like most people to survive need like water and like all the essential food group, but you just need Maruchan ramen. I mean, they're both quick, it's fast, it's easy. And if you do it too much, you might die. Although one is from like sodium and the other one is like from prison because that's like kind of illegal, which, which kind of leads to why it's bad too. Yeah, physical touch is free and I like that, but like you could be paying for it for the rest of your life if it's unconsented, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, I feel like now during most relationships, both romantic and everything else in between, being touchy, is a no-no. I don't think that needs to be explained. Like someone who's always touching, I get that very clingy type of person vibe. Like actually metaphorically like clingy. Like, you're the type of people that give you hugs for every interaction. Like dog, have you heard of a handshake? We've met three times already. We don't know each other like that. And also probably voted right now, most likely to die during this pandemic, either because they caught the virus from touching people or from loneliness from not touching people. But really that's the thing though, who likes touchy people? In fact, one of my friends upon meeting them for the first time at VidCon ended up being super touchy and I I loved it. Like, all right, all right, hold on. All right, physical touch is actually ranked four for me. But recently I've learned that I uh, love it. Uh, I mean, it could be that I haven't been touched by a girl in any capacity in like four years. So I might have a little bit of bias. All right, so if you pick the second date, yours is words of affirmation. So when someone tells you they love you, you love that is what I'm saying here. Words of encouragement, people expressing how they feel about you is what you like. Like, okay, who doesn't like being told you're cool? Like nine out of 10 people like being complimented. We just don't know how to take it. But, but these people like being complimented over everything else. That you're probably good at communication because your whole reason for feeling things. You don't really need much either. Just to be told you're doing okay or someone believes in you and then boom, you've got whatever project you're going through under wraps. But that's really probably where the positive stop. See, the issue with these people on the flip side is they're also probably insecure yo don't, don't don't fight me hold on hold on okay look if we're being honest what screams no confidence more than having to be told things to feel better like no you like you gotta have a little intrinsic worth you need someone to tell you you're doing okay like that sounds like trust issues like these are the same type of people are gonna be on their wedding day asking like are you sure you like me though like really i really dislike this type of person. i really dislike them a lot because i am that that is my number one love language i've always connected strongly with things people said to me because i have no intrinsic value i don't know there's something about getting a really long text message about how important you are to someone now if you pick the third one your love language it's acts of service uh and not that kind of act of service no basically you enjoy people doing things for you sound shallow it's kind of it's kind of because it is you probably put a lot of value in your work and productivity you think it's crazy that someone would take some time out of their day to do something for you because you probably don't wouldn't do that for them <laughs> on the downside you might come off a bit selfish like you want someone to do your laundry for you and that's how you know they like you now go clean my linens because unfortunately this is my secondary love language and i am most definitely lazy i don't know there's just something about someone going out of their way to do something for you it's not the act yourself but it's the idea that someone would take the time out of their day to do something for me for me like i'm gross i hate me why would you <laughs> next if you pick the fourth one your love language is quality time ah so you're lonely on the bright side i can see you as like a pragmatic type it all kind of adds up you're dating someone you'd probably like to spend time with them like who would have thought and i think it shows what you value most you being alone but this time with someone else <laughs> now in my life personally there's another one that i thought i wasn't big on but actually no i'm huge on it here's a quick litmus test if you care about quality time do you like long distance relationships no other than you probably love your quality time. finally if you pick the fifth one your love language is gifts Okay, okay. Don't be upset if this is the one you went with, all right? Everyone loves gifts, okay? Like, you can't say you don't. But no one wants people to know they love gifts because the idea of wanting a gift is shallow, and that's okay. Like, I didn't think I liked receiving gifts, but someone giving you a small thing that shows they were thinking about you and knows what you like, that sh <laughs> means a ton. And I appreciate that. Not using gifts as your only leverage, not that great, but otherwise, it's a great tool to show how much you care about someone. And despite that, you are a little shallow. And that's it. Uh, I hope y'all feel bad about me blazing your love language but no matter what you are and who you like and what you like and who you are you can be a mix of these you can have different things you can love different ways but the most important thing is that you understand what your partner's love language is if you know this you'll be in a right spot so i hope i helped and also didn't hurt your feelings too much because i definitely hurt mine
What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Social Distancing Richie here. The last weeks have been tough, I feel like, for everybody. <laughs> so before anything, before even telling you to, to check out my other videos, make sure y'all are staying inside. Please take care of each other, all right? It's interesting times out right now. Now, aside from all the savvy stuff, I really hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you liked that video, be sure to check out my last one. It was about this show I watched on Netflix called Love is Blind. It's a super interesting thing. Go check that out. Sorry if I seem like, Dad, it's because I am. I'm trying not to let this whole shit get to me, but I'm out here trying to work on my mental health. <laughs> but hopefully uh, bringing the content will, you know, make everyone feel a little bit better. So here's hoping. Other than that, thank you guys. Thank you guys to my wonderful patrons who are out here. Um, if you want a place to hang out and you're feeling lonely, check out the Discord. We're out there. Um, that's really about it, though. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for watching. And uh, we'll get through this. All right. Peace.